What's going on, you guys? Today we're going to be talking about the 14 Development Diary of Imperator Rome. And this one actually talks about the offices and laws in the Republic. And this is kind of goes off the last development diary, which is the 13th, which is really cool because it talks about how you have to actually get the Senate to kind of work with you. So like if you want to declare a war on Carthage, you actually have to work the Senate to back that war. You know, like you can't just unanimously say, hey, look, we're de declaring war on Carthage. You have to actually get the Senate to kind of side with your, you know, with that, um, which is really cool. All right, so let's dive into here. First of all, we have the current ruler, which in Rome is called the Consul. And a decision to make it more into a fun, engaging game where you can, where you care about your characters, you only have one Consul in Rome and they serve five years. The next Consul, which is called Canada, is usually the most popular and prominent character from the most powerful faction in the Senate. Friendship and back backing of other parties influences this as well. There are eight officers in the government, and they all serve until you replace them or they die. Interesting. There are two officers for each attribute, and the skill in their attribute determines how big their impact is on your country. Each of them gives the character prominence, and some give other benefits to the character. So you got censor. Each char charisma gives pl plus 0.2 in Senate influence for the censor's party. Praetor. Each charisma gives plus 1% commerce income. Tribunus Mitum, <laughs> I guess I'm going to massacre some of these names here. Uh, each marshal gives plus one discipline. Perfectus Maliterate, mal whatever. <laughs> each marshal gives plus one. Agor, each zeal gives plus five omen power. Pontifex, I think I got that one right. Each zeal reduces stability cost by 2%. Vibunus of Plebus, each finesse increases free men happiness by 1% and vulnerness each finesse increases health by 0.5 appointing someone to an office to increase their loyalty but removing someone deeply hurts their their loyalties there are eight characters character categories of laws in a republic and each of them have four different laws where only one law can be active in it, in each category changing a law costs 250 oratory power and you must have must also have the back of the center for changing the categories of laws. Interesting. Wow, that's a lot. I'm assuming that's going to be a lot. 250 orator power because as you can see here on the screenshot, it's only 100. And I'm assuming they're not going to give you like 50 each, you know, uh, month or something. I'm assuming it's probably going to be lower than that. So it's not something you're going to be doing often. Anti-corruption laws impacts corruption and unrest. Religious laws, omen cost and power influences of religious par party. Maritime laws, commerce, wealth, and pirates. Oh, so there's some pirates in this game. Integration laws, pop happiness, influences of civic and populist parties. Citizen laws, pop promotion costs. Land reforms, AE impact, unrest, and slave output. Military reforms, different military bonuses, and election reforms, corruption, consul term duration. Oh, wow, okay. So it looks like there's a lot of politics in here where you could actually change uh, even the term that a consul actually runs for. So this is actually pretty cool. All right, so laws available, land reforms. Wow, okay. Enact citizenship law in the Senate. And then here you got the civic faction, military faction. Wow, okay. There's too much opposition in the Senate. And of course, in the last um, dev diary, they were saying you can kind of influence certain parties, but it's going to increase your, um, I think it was infamy or your uh, corruption or whatever. It's going gonna, it's gonna to negatively impact your... Um, I guess the way people look at you, <laughs> you know, because obviously if the president, if, you know, president of the United States went to Congress and, you know, basically was strong arming senators to do, which actually probably does happen, <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't look good. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Please be aware that mon monarchies and tribes have different offices and laws. And if you like to mode, you can have your own unique offices and laws for each nation if you so want. 
And next week, we'll go into military traditions. So overall, guys, this actually, um, I really like this because it's basically uh, going deeper and deeper into uh, how you the game is not only about expanding and, you know, expanding the Roman Empire and war and all this stuff, but that you have to work inside the confines of the government, you know, like that the president can't just do everything and anything he wants, that you have to work with Congress and you have to work with the senators and in some cases probably strong arm them to say, hey, look, I need you to back my my law because whatever reason i'm looking forward to this it's going to add a whole different layer to paradox games and i'm looking forward to it all right guys i will catch you in the next one see you then